السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. This is Hani Ismail from Planning Engineer website. I received today a very interesting question. It is asking me, Hani, I did the cash flow in the Primavera. Then my manager asked me about the cash in and cash out and what is the net cash flow. And I find this question is interesting to discuss what is the difference between the cash flow we are getting from the Oracle Primavera and what so-called cash in, cash out and the net cash flow. Okay, in this video, I'm going to explain to you how we can uh, uh, differentiate or understand between these two concepts. First of all, the cash uh, flow created from Primavera. This is representing the value of the works you are going to execute on a certain month or a certain week or even a certain year. So it is not related at all to whatever money you are going to pay or whatever money you are going to get. And I'll show you an example in a minute. Okay. So the cash flow from Primavera, again, it is representing the amount of money which equal to the work done. So we are converting the work we have created or the work executed to the amount of money. Okay, so what is different between this cash flow and cash in, cash out and net cash flow? Cash in, this is your payment uh, when it comes to your bank account. So this is the money you are going to collect from your client and not necessarily to be collected same month you invoiced according to your contract you may be uh, receiving the money two months one month 45 days 15 days after the payment certificate so this is one thing the second thing that we, we in the cash flow in the primavera we are not considering the advanced payment but in the cash in and cash out we are considering the advanced payment. So if you have 10%, 20% advanced payment, you should consider while you are creating this calculation. So cash in, whatever cash will be in your bank account from your client. This is very simple. Okay. What about cash out? Cash out, it means the money you are going to pay. It includes the money for the uh, materials, the money for the manpower, the money for the equipment, the advanced payment you are going to pay for your subcontractors, whatever money you are going to pay. So what is the importance of doing the exercise of cash in and cash out? If you are working in a well-organized company, we need to know what is the cash flow for this project. It means I'm going to get 10% or 20% advanced payment. Then I will pay from this money to my work, to my subcontractors and so on. At certain point, you need to finance this project. You need as a company to pay from your pocket to the project. And then later on, you will get your profit. So it is very important information, even in the bidding stage, some companies, they have some formulas and they set up some criteria to find out, okay, this project is $20 million project. How much money I should have in order to execute this project? And too many companies, they fall in, the, in this trick. They don't do this calculation. So they find that after certain the duration of the project they don't have enough money to finance the project and this exercise should be done along with some cost control concept because you need to know how much each activity will cost you and uh, uh, some companies they do like a, a fixed percentage and this is the easy way it is not 100 percent accurate but it is better than nothing so they say okay I'm profiting, let's say, 15 to 20% from each activity I do. So they just multiply the, uh, the selling price by this percentage, and this should be the actual costs. 
I will show you one example how to convert the cash flow of Promovera into cash in, cash out, and get the net cash flow. If you need more information about creating accurate cash in, cash out, and the net cash flow, I advise you with the cost control course where I discuss this in details. But for now, let's go and see what or how we can give our company some information from only the Promovera cash flow and convert it into cash in, cash out, and net cash flow. Let's go and see. Okay, so this is our cash flow in Promovera, uh, uh, extracted from Promovera, and this mainly came from here. This is the monthly cash flow per month, and this is the cumulative cash flow. Now, we need to have here, I'm going to copy the month is now again. Okay, I need to have here monthly cash out. And as we agreed, I'm going to put some percentage. Let's say uh, uh, my profit is 20%. So I'm going to multiply all the values by 80%. So I'm going to multiply this one by 80%. And as I told you, this is not the best method to calculate. If you need to know how to calculate it in accurate way, uh, because this, this cost should come from materials, uh, manpower, equipment, and so on. But for this exercise, for this purpose, to explain to you the cash in and cash out and how it works, I'm going to use it. So this is the cash out. I'm going to assume it is 80% from the selling price. And I'm going to drag the formula. Let's copy it to here. So this is my monthly cash out. I'm going to create cumulative cash out, which showing to me the amount of money I have spent Cumulative in a cumulative way until the end of the project. Okay, very good. Now, the cash in. So I'm going to have monthly cash in. Okay. According to your payment terms, let's assume that you will get paid one month after you submit your invoice. So by end of this month, I'm going to submit my invoice, okay? Then I'll, it will take one month or 45 days to get, so I'll get it in this month, okay? So in that case, I need to have this formula, but I assume also that I have, let's say, 15% uh, uh, advanced payment, and I'm going to receive this 15% in the first month. So I'm going to get the project value multiply by 0.15. So I'm going to get this money in the first month. This is the advanced payment. Okay, in the second month, I'm not getting anything because I still didn't submit my invoice. In the third month, I'm going to get 80% or 85% of this amount right because this is the work done okay i'm going by end of this month i'm going to submit it here it will take one month or 45 days until i get but i'll not get it 100 percent i will get it uh, 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 and the, uh, the 15 percent of the advanced payment will be deducted okay what else if i have a retention let's say i have a retention of five percent it means I'm not going to get 85%. I'm going to get only 80% because I have a retention. So this is the amount of the, uh, the net amount I'm going to get. And this is related to this month of November. I'm going to get it paid in the month of January. So I'm going to drag this formula up to here. Okay, but I did the one mistake because it should be linked to the monthly, not the cumulative. 
in the monthly, not the cumulative. Okay. Now, in this month, I'm going to finish my project and handing over. And it means that I'm going to get back my 5%, right? The 5% retention. Let's say you will get it after five months. Uh, I'm sorry, after one month. So I'm, go I'm expecting to get it here. So in that case, I'm going to make the formula. And this is 0.5 by the project value. This is a project value. It should be plus 0.5 multiply this project value. Okay. Now, this is the monthly cash in. Let's see the cumulative cash in. Actually, this is not a big deal. It is very easy. But you need to understand the concept of the cash in and cash out in order to be able to uh, create this one. So this one exactly, like, let me double check. This one is exactly the same as this one, which is a project value. Okay, so I get all my money, but it, it the problem here, when you get it, this is the idea. We need to drag this one a little bit so we'll have this month. Okay, now I have the uh, cash in, cash out, and I need to have now the net, net monthly cash flow. This will ca uh, will be cash in minus and the cash in here in this case don't be don't do the mistake like me monthly cash in minus the monthly cash out this will be net cash flow it means the amount I need to pay or the amount will be extra for me okay now we need to create the cumulative net cash flow which is this very important now because this will tell your company how much money you should have in order to take this project or to finance this project if required okay so in that case i'm going to uh, make the cumulative cash in minus the cumulative cash out so as you see here that at the first month I will be very rich. Oh, sorry, this is a cumulative cash in minus a cumulative cash out. First month, I'll be very rich, very happy because I have 16 million. Let's see how this will work during the project. Okay. In that case, I can see that I reached a stage here in March 23 that I don't have almost any money, 214 only with positive. Okay, so I should not pay more here, okay, or should not take risks because at uh, in this month, in this specific month, I will be in a problem because I might need to finance the project. Considering that I have here uh, monthly cash in I have here 15% advanced payment what if this 15% was 10% only so this one is 10% okay and in that case this one will be multiplied by 85 and let's see how it will affect my cash flow Uh, we should not drag to the very end should drag to here only and this one will be 85 this two numbers should be exactly the same remember this okay so now if I have 10% only what would be the case here this now will have negative negative values what is a negative value means I need to finance this project at these three months. I need to have at least two million and sixteen thousand 
ready in December 2022 to finance this project. If I don't have this money at this stage of the project, I would definitely face problems. Also here, we did not consider the advanced payment for subcontractors. Maybe I need to pay some more money here or here or here for my subcontractor in order to prepare the material and so on. So this is how it looks like the cash in, cash out and the uh, net cash flow. What if we want to uh, put it in a, a, a chart? We can insert recommended chart. I will choose a combo chart. I'll click OK. We can have it like this. Then we change the values, remove whatever we don't want. OK, so change chart type. And here monthly cash out. Let's make it a column. Then cumulative cash out cumulative cash out I would say okay uh, I will not take all of them I will only keep monthly cash out and uh, I will remove this one and I will remove uh, monthly I will keep monthly cash out monthly cash in then I will keep only cumulative net cash it will be more realistic now Okay, now I change chart type and I'll make this one in the secondary X. So here we can see that at the beginning of the project, remember this is a zero, huh? Here, this is the most important thing. I can now add the values here, add data labels. And uh, let's uh, align these data labels. Let's make it vertically. And it is clear now that in these three months, I need to finance the project. This is a, what's so called cash in, cash out, and what is the differences between them. And this is, a, uh, by the way, this is a. Uh, uh, profit of from the project it should be uh, this should be like this okay this should be like this because we always have this value 21 million is our profit this is the variance between the cash in and cash out so this is how it looks like I'll be positive, 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 positive. Then I'm going to be negative in these three months. Then again, I'll start be positive, positive, positive. This is what's so called cash in and cash out. And of course, this is the in. This is what I'm spending. And this is how it looked like. I hope you found this video useful to you. This is how we calculating cash in and cash out. But the idea here, the more accurate information you put in this uh calculations like actually how you calculate the cash out and how you forecast the cash out it is based on materials proc uh, procurement maybe advanced payment it is uh, based on uh, uh, manpower and it is based on when you are going to execute this one so if you would like to know how to link these all together using Primavera data and creating a cost control module, I highly recommend the cost control course for you. But for now, if you would like to do it as a percentage from the Primavera, you don't need all of this. It will not be 100% accurate, but it is better than nothing, right? I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next one.